Hello everyone, Freedia Hero here, and welcome to another Time for Two loadout video. I'll bring you new loadouts to try every once a week. Today's loadout is going to be a Frontier Defense build that surprisingly is my very first Frontier Defense build within the game. As previously I have created one, but I've never really tested it and actually recorded it for viewing purposes. This was more of me just trying out new things and seeing if I could find something interesting and something that can work. In this case here, I have found something that can work, and I believe that if you guys enjoy it, I'll probably upload more of these. If you don't, then by all means, I'll probably stop it and probably focus more on the PvP side. But anyways, today's pilot is going to be called the Arc Bruiser, who is a master of setting up traps and causing a living hazard on the battlefield. Now, the Arc Bruiser is a pilot that I wanted to do for a very long time, since he primarily focuses on booby trapping areas and allowing your teammates to sweep in and finish them off. So I kind of made a lazy man build but at the same time, a interesting one. Since for the first time, I can switch to a new game mode instead of always playing attrition. And it also allows me to expand on my array of builds as I can actually try something outside of PvP area and focus more on a PvE area. So for the loadout, this is the following. The class is the AWOL pilot to fit in for a more stationary playstyle, since you're going to be protecting and staying near the objective all the time. Your primary is going to be the X-55 Devotion to fit into your stationary role you'll be playing as, as well as the suited firepower you'll provide with the A wall attached. Your secondary can either be the P-2016, the RE-45, or if you're feeling really lucky then the Wingman, if you want to put yourself through the pain of course. And your heavy will be the Archer, since it does do pretty good amount of damage when amped or unamped. And I believe you get unlimited amount when you're using the Archer, so it's pretty good against titans and reapers that tend to flock around mid games. Your ordnance will be the Argonade to allow you to stop both fronts and titans in place and give you enough time for you to take them down or delay them if things get too hectic. Your boost will be the tip mines that will act as a portable landmine for the build as although you'll be using the arc mines for the build, the tip mines can come in handy as well for catching out any players or such that tend to get behind your objective. Although one thing I do notice is that I believe in Frontier Defense that probably wouldn't matter because boost, I don't believe boosts are active since we've got the army to work with. But say for example you wanted to go ahead and use this build in PvP then by all means use the tip mines as it kind of works the same thing as well. Just in PvP depending on the game mode you're playing as it might be a little bit harder to pull off some of the things I do in this game mode for Frontier Defense. Your Titan will be Scorch with the Fuel for the Fire Titan Kit that will decrease your firewall ability by a few seconds. Now this will come in handy as you can literally create lines of fire to block or damage oncoming enemies at any angle you want. And I find that this is really useful against the new Titans or the Electric Ronins because the Electric Ronins tend to charge straight at you and the moment they get a target onto you they'll chase you down until you're destroyed. So by putting up a firewall it gives you a bit of breathing room and the new legions that tend to walk just forward to the objective allows you to give you enough breathing room and space so that when they do detonate they'll be at a very safe distance. Plus by them walking through the firewall they'll be doing constant damage to these themselves so it's a win-win situation for you. Now if you have the explosive barrel Aegis perk unlocked for your titan then you can literally make a no man zone with this build by placing the gas canisters in areas you know the enemy will come to and then detonating them the moment they get near, just like a pilot build is designed around. But if you don't have the explosive barrel Aegis Pub unlocked for your Scorch, then don't worry, you can still play this build quite effective. Since 90% of the time when I was playing this build, I tend to just put my Scorch on auto, and I was more on the front line since basically the whole area that I was defending was pretty much secured. But if you also want to, you could also add in a new eject for your Titan if you want to. So if you don't want to go with the method of putting a auto titan near the objective and leaving him there, you can always put nuke eject instead. As 50% of the time, depending on how things go, some enemies will get by and get into your defensive area and sometimes they'll become a cluster of a mess. So if things get too hectic, you can just use a nuke eject that will pretty much decimate all the main forces within the area. Just make sure you're not in that area when it explodes. And finally, your pilot kit will be the fast regen and titan hunter to always allow you to stay active and prepared. Now this build would have been ideally perfect back when art traps and funded defense were slightly cheaper to purchase. 
as I could have created a multitude of landmines everywhere, but no enemies would have managed to get past without being stunned. But now, although the cost have changed to 650, pre 500 points, you can still create a landmine of death and prevent the AI from getting anywhere near the objective. Just, you're going to have to work a lot harder on getting more points and bonuses than usual. And depending on where you set yourself up on the map, to gain a nice clear advantage of the area and where enemies may be spawning into, it means that you'll probably be adding in a lot more extra effort into getting as much kills and points as possible. Which may sound tedious for you, but this shouldn't be much of a problem since you guys have been playing Frontier Defense and Titanfall 2 for a very good while now. So the first thing I recommend you do when you enter the game is to find an area for your own and set up a personal defense to where you can rack up enough points and kills to get your arc mines. Now your objective is to stay near the objective and protect it with all your arc mines spaced out, and your auto scorch if you decide to go with him, if you choose not to use him, and make him act as a secondary defense barrier. And this should be easy to achieve in the first two stages, well later on it does get a bit harder but you should be fully prepared either way. I also recommend you play in normal or hard mode, as I've noticed more enemies spawn which means you can get more credits to spend. And most players I play with tend to go to one area and forget another area that spawns titans, which can also benefit you the most as you can use it as a farming area for you to farm and get enough points for you to get more mines, or if you want to go ahead, use other armory gear if you want to. If you play your cards right, then you should have a decent and highly protective objective that can prevent and destroy uncommon enemies, plus you could also branch out and participate in fights further away from the objective as you won't need to protect it all the time with the right setup, like a all the chip scorch. Could be beneficial if you don't want to man your titan at the stage. But, and I mean but, this can all go badly depending on the map you play on, as some maps are designed to allow the enemy to have a clear line of sight at the objective, and not worry about getting too close to the objective, like war games or homesteads. So you may instead need to rethink how you want to defend an area on your own, and what areas you should be thinking of taking out first, so you can always be ready. At the same time, don't worry too much about it, as you still have support from other players, and if you choose to, you also have an AWOL plus Devotion combo, that can be great for distracting and taking out a big group of enemies in one swift go. All you need to do on your end, is make sure you get the points, get your arc mines in a suitable area that you know enemies will be going to, lay down enough support of fire, and you should be good to go. Now luckily in this one game I'm currently showing you, I had a good team to work with that kind of knew what I was doing and they basically set up a nice little perimeter except for one instance where the drones started spawning in and although we were all firing at it, the drones would do a ton of damage to our objective. Now we could account for that quite easily if we had a few sentries or a few titans that were much more accurate with the shots. But we worked together and we did pretty good and any enemies on the outside lane that try to get in were getting stunned by my arc mines or their arc mines. So many ways I protected all my teammates and at the same time we all benefited it the most. Because in the end, we survived. Now at this rate you should be pretty set for protecting the objective. You will still have few issues with the more titans and some reapers though, as they will pass through the defences at time. But if you stay on your toes and listen to the comms when they arrive, then you can control both the objective and the field. So. Enjoy your slightly campy loadout and tell me what you think. Because if you enjoy it, then maybe I'll do more in the future. If you don't, then I'll probably just stick with the PvP type content. So that's the end of my video. I do hope you enjoyed it. If you did, then by all means leave a like, a comment, and subscribe for more. If you didn't, then by all means leave a dislike. I understand and I know what to improve on in the near future. So once again, guys, thank you all for watching and I do hope to see you again soon.